Okay, we got a great video for you today, folks. Today we're going to look at red rubber mulch made out of recycled tires, and we're going to compare it to wood mulch. We're going to settle that argument once and for all. Which mulch is better, rubber mulch or wood mulch? And we are also going to take a look at which mulch burns more between the rubber mulch and the wood mulch. And down below in the video description is a table of contents so that you can jump directly to whatever chapter you want to on this video. Okay, now the University of Nevada, along with the University of California, did this study here on mulches. And this is called the combustibility of landscape mulches. You should take a look at this. I'll put a link to this report down in the video description for you below. But essentially in here, what they did was they burnt all of these different mulch types, eight different types, and they looked at flame height, they looked at rate of spread, and they looked at the temperature that it burns at. And you can see it here on this chart. So the shredded rubber burned the hottest, but it really wasn't that much hotter than, uh, for example, pine needles and shredded western cedar wood. This is my favorite part of the whole test right here, folks. I get to set things on fire. Okay, the first mulch is the Ground Smart Cedar Red Rubber Mulch. This is rubber mulch that, so this is shredded tire. So it doesn't seem to be igniting. It is kind of windy. Let me try again here, see if we can't get it to light up. It sort of lights up there, you can see it. There we go, it, it, it's catching. Let's see if it stays there. And I'm gonna measure the temperature of it right there. I'm getting 522, 550. So it's kind of going around all over the place, but that's what I'm able to get. And that's sort of in line with report from the state of Nevada there with the fire departments and the colleges. Now, now it's up to like, uh, like 650. It's kind of bouncing around. Every, every time it scans, it bounces around a little more. So you can see though, it did take quite a bit of flame on that thing to make it get going. And you know, like they say, I guess embers can land on it and they can settle down in the constant heat will make it catch fire, but you can see right here, we have a pretty good fire that is brewing now. I just wanna see what the smoldering temperature is. Yeah, so it's still showing around 570, 600. Okay, so now let's test the cypress and see what we got, the cypress mulch. Let's see how well it does here. There's a little bit of a breeze, so the wind might blow it out, but yeah, you can see it, it does smolder quite a bit and it is sort of burning. Now remember, this is dry, so if you had it wet or if you had a recent rain or a recent watering, it would be a lot more impervious to catching fire. So you can see we're getting in the high fives. There's a 700, there's a sixes. It seems to be all over the place. So these seem to be burning at around the same temperature. So in a real life situation, folks, this is probably how more realistic as to how the fire would start. If you have a brush fire in the area and the embers come and settle down on top of the wood, whether you have wood mulch or rubber mulch. Okay, so now we have the pine bark nuggets that we're going to try. Let's try lighting them up here. See how well they, they burn. Now I left these soaking out in the sun a few hours today to see if they would dry out. Okay, so we reignited it again. You can hear a lot of the, the whatever moisture still in there is being snapped out. So now we're measuring uh, where the flames are, it's overload, so that means it's like over 700 there. 729 I saw, 543, 687. So it's kind of like, depending on where the flame's blowing at any given time there. So it looks to me like that of the three mulches that we set on fire here today, the fire here in the pine bark nugget seems to spread quicker than it does in the cypress wood mulch and in the red rubber mulch. You notice this takes a lot more effort to put out the flames and the smoldering too than the other two mulches did. This stuff really smolders hot underneath. And this report here says the same thing that we pretty much found here today was that all of the mulch treatments demonstrated active flaming combustion. So there you have it, they all burn. And looking at the chart here, you can see that the shredded rubber mulch burned at the hottest average maximum temperature in excess of 630 degrees measured at four inches above the mulch bed. And it produced the greatest flame heights, averaging over three feet. 
Okay, now here's a very surprising result that's gonna disappoint a lot of you who, who wanna be just so against the rubber mold. But it says here that the most rapid rate of fire spread came from shredded western red cedar traveling at an average rate of 47.9 feet per minute. Moderate temperatures averaging 380 degrees were measured at four inches above the mulch bed. And the other thing that's even really damaging for the cedar mulch fans is that this mulch treatment also produced embers which moved beyond the plot perimeter and ignited adjacent mulch pits. Oh, dude, really? Yeah, so make sure you check out this report. There we are, it is 91.6 degrees outside here. We got some red rubber mulch that's sitting out here in the hot sun. Let's see what temperature we get here. So right here, I'm looking at 122, 124, 119, somewhere in that area. So we get a pretty good idea, okay, but let's, move some of it out of the way and go down a little deeper and see what the temperature is underneath there. See, so now I'm dropping down to 99, so we're getting a lot closer to the ambient temperature here. See, so it's not what people claim where, oh my gosh, this red rubber mulch gets super heated and it, and it robs all of the water out of the soil. You know, it's just not true. So here we are down to like the, the top soil and we're down to like 96 degrees here. So. What they're saying is just simply not true. And this is not superheated either. I'm touching it, my hands not getting burnt. So people that make that kind of claim, you know what? They don't even have red rubber mulch. Now here's some wood mulch and let's see what we get here. So we're coming in at around, looks like 101, 98. Let me try to find a big chunk that we can get a good return off of. 113 or so, I saw that 115, 121 degrees. So the wood mulch is not really that much cooler than the rubber mulch, folks, like other people have said. A lot of people criticized us saying, oh, you know, that wood mulch keeps it nice and cold. That rubber gets steaming hot and it can cause a fire on its own, blah, 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 blah. I've compiled a pretty thorough list here of the pros and cons of both the rubber mulch and the wood mulch. And we'll let you decide based on what we have here, based on our research. So with rubber mulch, the color is guaranteed for 12 years on most of them and you only have to mulch it once, just set it and forget it, folks. That's the beauty of the rubber mulch. Also, rubber mulch will not float away in heavy rains or floods like the wood mulch does. Now, we showed you on our previous mulching video from six months ago how the rubber mulch just sinks to the bottom, while at the same time, the wood mulch will actually come up through the rubber mulch. If you put rubber mulch on top of wood and the wood floats up, it'll go right up past the rubber mulch and float up and out and over. You do not need to keep adding rubber mulch every six months to a year like you do with the wood mulch. This stuff, you see people every six months or every year adding more and more on top, and that's how you get that mounding effect. Rubber mulch may reduce weeds since it does not contribute nutrients to the soil. That's an interesting point too, because a lot of you come in here with this argument to me that, oh, the wood mulch adds nutrients to the soil, okay? You can't you flip that around and try to use it the opposite way. If wood mulch adds nutrients to the soil, it's also adding nutrients to the weeds, and yes, it will allow weeds to grow. Okay, so what really miffs me, folks, because you know, I'm always a consumer advocate at heart, and I care about you folks, but it just really, really miffs me when I see manufacturers put on the label here, prevents weeds, because there is nothing in the world that prevents weeds. Another benefit of rubber mulch is that rubber mulch keeps your soil moist and protected from the hot sun, because when you bury it deep with, you know, two, three, four inches, down where the soil is, it's a lot cooler, and so the moisture stays in there. Now, we've had a few people that come in and try to do Jedi mind tricks on us and say that, oh, you know, this, this rubber mulch here gets super heated and it, and it dries up the soil. But how would they know? They don't even have the red rubber mulch. They've never had it. They don't know anything about it. Okay, now this is probably the biggest reason why we switched to red rubber mulch. And that is because rubber mulch will not attract insects like termites and carpenter ants. Now, if you remember what we mentioned earlier, the old wooden mulch, that was the reason why we lost our other palm tree was because it attracted insects that were devastating to wood. This very product right here, the wood mulch that was meant to be the saving grace of our garden and all of its plants ended up being a contributing factor 
to the death of one of our 20 foot tall palm trees. Many rubber mulches are certified playground for safety surfaces and you can have a two to four times the jump distance to land on, on rubber mulch than you would on wood. Using recycled tire rubber mulch keeps the tires out of the landfill. Of course, but now it's in your yard. It's spread all over your yard here, but it's not going anywhere. Okay, now let's talk about the disadvantages of rubber mulch. So rubber mulch has four times higher initial cost than wood mulch. So bags like these can be two or $3 at Home Depot. So this large bag here, we got at Costco for $10. Not everybody has Costco and Sam's Club near them. And when they do have it, it's only in the early spring and then they sell out quickly. Uh, the other disadvantage about rubber mulch is you should probably end up uh, adding fertilizer to your soil about once a year because the red rubber mulch here, all, all of the rubber mulches, they don't give any contributing benefits to the soil. It doesn't help the plants. It doesn't, you know, in my opinion, it doesn't kill them. I know people are gonna say, oh, you're killing the whole world with it. Oh. But in reality, you know, it doesn't contribute anything. It's really there just for the looks. Your rubber mulch may leach small amounts of toxins into the soil. And this is not recommended for a vegetable garden. So if you have a vegetable garden, you probably don't wanna put any uh, rubber mulch there. Another disadvantage is that rubber mulch gets hot in the sun but it doesn't get as boiling hot as people make it out to be. I've walked on it in bare feet. I've never burned my feet on this stuff ever. So these people are making it up. These are people, again, like I said, that don't have the red rubber mulch that are making inflammatory statements there, not backed up by any kind of real data. Okay, another disadvantage of rubber mulch is that weeds can still grow through rubber mulch or even in it, just like it does in wood mulch. It's about the same. Okay, another disadvantage of rubber mulch is that it is very flammable in wildfire areas or for smokers who like to throw their cigarette butts on it. And it burns hotter than wood mulch. Cedar wood mulch, it burned at about 380 degrees, but the red rubber mulch burns at 650 degrees. But you know what? It doesn't matter if it burns hotter. If this stuff catches fire, it's hot. If you're standing in it when it catches fire, you're gonna burn to death. It doesn't matter what degree it is. So burning ember from a wildfire can land on rubber mulch and wood mulch, and they will both catch fire. Now we aim our direction here towards the wood mulch. And let's talk about the benefits of the wood mulch. Pros are that wood mulch may reduce weeds. And despite the false claims by manufacturers, it does not prevent weeds. It only aids in preventing them. And this is probably wood mulch's biggest benefit is that it contributes nutrients to the soil. However, only after it has decomposed, which can take up to three years. And it is not miracle Grow. So please people stop coming in here and make it sound like this stuff is miracle Grow. It is not. It contributes incrementally to the soil. And the other thing that a lot of people try to sweep under the carpet when they're making their argument about it, uh, contributing to the soil, this actually robs your soil of nitrogen while it's decomposing. Now it gives it back later. It's sort of holding the nitrogen, right? Kind of like the dirty secret of, of the wood mulch that they, they don't tell you about. Another benefit of wood mulch is that it keeps your soil moist, just like the rubber mulch. You put a few inches of it and it might be hot on the surface, but as you go down uh, the three inches towards the soil, it's going to be pretty good down there at the soil. Also, wood mulch is natural. Some people really like that natural wood look and it looks much more natural compared to just, you know, painted red rubber threads of tire. And finally, the last benefit is that the wood mulch has a lower initial cost compared to the rubber mulch. The wood mulch is one quarter of the cost. So now here's some disadvantages of the wood mulch. The biggest one, which is what caused me to stop using it in the first place, but it attracts devastating insect colonies like termites and carpenter ants. The other disadvantage about wood mulch, which is a big one, is that wood mulch floats away in heavy rains or floods. Look, see, there goes your no float. Remember, it said it right on the bag, no float. Here it goes, floating away folks, right over the top. Now a lot of people on my previous video tried to blame me saying, oh, you have a, a drainage issue, you blah, blah, blah. I don't have a drainage issue. My garden doesn't flood when it rains, only when there's a huge, huge, huge deluge of rain. Because the reason is we got this massive roof, two stories of roof over us, and it all, all that water comes running down like a waterfall. And when you have a big deluge, small period of time, you might have some water overflowing over the garden here into the, into the lawn. That's only natural, but it, it, you know, it drains very quickly. No, we don't have a drainage problem. 
that wood just floats, period, if you get a lot of water on it. Okay, now, you know, we get a lot of the tree huggers that come in here and condescend to me and so make it look like I'm some environmental criminal for using the rubber mulch. Hey, if we use wood mulch, we're, I think we're just as equal environmental criminals because of the deforestation, folks. These companies are tearing down forests and forests and forests just to make mulch. And then they're mixing all sorts of chemicals in them and stuff like that. Back in the 90s, and I don't know if they still do it, but they used to put arsenic in the mulch. And so they used to warn people to wear gloves. And some people got really sick and numb hands and, and para, what is that? Uh, peripheral neurop neuropathy, whatever they call that. Um, tingling nerves and stuff from the arsenic that was in there. And also some manufacturers buy cheap contaminated byproduct wood to be used in the mulch. So they'll come into wood shops, even if it's got oil and nastiness on it and other chemicals and stuff, and they'll just mulch it right up. They don't care. So how is that helping the environment, folks? You're dumping toxins in it just as well, right? You have to use your same argument that if you have contaminated mulch and you put that stuff down, according to your very argument, you have to accept the fact the rain is draining this down and creating a love canal, all right? <laughs> um, the other disadvantage of the wood mulch is, un is unsightly mounding from constantly adding more mulch on top of existing wood mulch. Now, you know, the research experts tell you that when you go to add more mulch, you're supposed to remove the old mulch. What do you do with that old mulch? Are you throwing it in the trash and now you're adding that to the landfill? So you see, I don't think either side of the aisle here, folks, is really correct on what's happening with the uh, effect on the environment. So most people fail to remove the old wood mulch as suggested by the experts. And you can see the tests that we did here, comparing the temperature of the wood to the temperature of the rubber. The wood wasn't that far behind you. Another disadvantage of the wood mulch is weeds can still grow through it. It doesn't prevent weeds. And the fact that it provides nutrients, if it's that miracle grow that you're claiming it is, you can bet weeds are gonna grow in this just like topsoil. And the last disadvantage of the wood mulch is it is very flammable, just like the red rubber mulches. Both are equally able to start fire in a wildfire with the embers coming down on. I don't think anyone is gonna be any more, uh, more likely to spread than the others. Hey, and you know what folks, if you're finding this video useful so far, hey, do us a favor, would you please give us a thumbs up down below that tells us that you like us. And if you have not subscribed to this channel yet, man, you see all of this great world-class content that we upload for you, all of these great videos on remodeling your homes, we cover all sorts of in-depth categories like covering your kitchens and installing cabinets and all sorts of other videos on remodeling your bathrooms. As you can see here, we help you deliver the best bathroom you could possibly get. Uh, installing tile throughout your house, how to install wood flooring, laminate flooring. We also cover engineering disasters you might find through your house. And we also do these great tool review videos for you that you're accustomed to seeing. And you know, we do all sorts of thorough testing and drop testing of the tools so that you can tell whether you're getting a quality product or not. And we also give you all of those great walkthroughs of the hardware stores, finding you the best tools at the best prices. So if you haven't subscribed yet, do that right now while it's fresh on your mind, click that subscribe button below and click the gray bell icon next to it. That tells YouTube to alert you whenever we upload a video or go live. That way you don't miss out. Well, thank you so much for tuning in today, folks. And we'll see you on the next one.